Just as expected, Apple has released the RC build for iOS 16.1 to both registered developers and public beta testers. So of course, in this video, we're going to talk about what's new in the software and when to expect the final release. Now, in addition to this iOS release, Apple also dropped the RC builds of iPadOS 16.1, macOS Ventura, watchOS 9.1, tvOS 16.1, and HomePodOS 16.1. So if we take a look at the size of the update, you could see here it came in at 5.26 gigabytes on my 14 Pro Max. That size will vary depending on your version you're coming from and the device you're on, but it will be a pretty large update if you are coming from a beta, going from a beta to a final release. Now, if we go ahead and check out the build number, we go to our settings, general, about 16.1 we can see the new build number is 20b79 and if we go down to the bottom you can see the modem firmware is 1.13.03 all right so now what's new here in the rc or release candidate build of ios 16.1 now if you're not aware the release candidate build is just the final release for beta testers so the general public will get this exact same build next week when the final version rolls out to the general public. This is just going to be early for both the developers and for public beta testers. So the first thing I want to talk about is the iCloud shared library. So this feature was originally intended for iOS 16, but it did get delayed and now it is finally here in 16.1. So you can see Apple does mention this in the release notes and it shows iCloud shared library as a separate library for seamlessly sharing photos and videos with up to five other people. And you will see in the photos application we will get this little person icon right there if you tap on that that gives you the ability to move this to a shared library and if you go into your settings and go to photos and then into shared library if you tap on add participants that's where you can add people so that they can see everything in that album and you can also get shared library suggestions sharing from camera and then also deletion notifications so that you can get a notification when a photo gets deleted and if you go into the sharing from camera section right here you can see you have the toggle for that you also have share automatically or share manually and also share when at home so it says when at home always add photos and videos from camera to the shared library even when other participants are not there so if you go into the camera application right here you will see up in the top left corner we do have that little person icon if you tap on that that will give you the option to change between shared library and your personal library and in the photos application itself if you tap on the three dots up in the top right hand corner you get the option here to show either both libraries or just the personal or shared library and you do also get the shared library badge if you want that to show up on individual photos so for instance if i switch this to shared library you will see it only shows the photos that are in my shared library which are only three of them right here and those are signified by the two people icon right there in the top right so that's a nice new feature that is now coming with ios 16.1 it is now fully done it's actually ready for prime time now so expect that when the final release rolls out and the most exciting update for iphone 14 pro and pro max users is that live activities is here so with 16.1 introduces the live activities with third-party applications you're now able to see live sports scores and other things up there in the dynamic island like your uber rides or uber eats anything like that will show up there on the dynamic island and also on the lock screen here down at the bottom now i've not been able to get this to work here on the rc build we also do not have this feature in the tv application so like if i go into the tv application or the tv settings you will see there is no toggle for that here at one point there was a toggle in here for live activities but even here in the rc build it has still not been reinstated so not too sure if we're gonna have to wait until the actual public release like the final release for the public next week or what but i'm not really seeing any evidence of live activities actually working here even on the rc build which is kind of strange apple fitness plus is now supported on all ios 16.1 devices regardless of if you have an apple watch paired or not so before it required an apple watch to be paired but now you can access apple fitness and apple fitness plus without the need of an apple watch ios 16.1 also introduced introduces a couple of pretty big features for the wallet application. So number one, we have key sharing. So you can see Apple says that key sharing allows you to securely share car, hotel room, and other keys in the wallet app using messages applications such as messages and WhatsApp. So this is going to be huge, especially for sharing a key 
for a hotel. I can see this being useful pretty much anytime I've ever stayed in a hotel. It'd be very convenient to just share that key from your phone. And then we also have the savings account officially launching for Apple Pay Cash. So now if you have money sitting in your Apple Pay Cash account, it's actually going to gain interest. Apple did mention that Matter is launching with 16.1, but inside of my settings here, if I go to general, before at some point in the 16.1 betas, we had a Matter section here, but that is still not back even with the RC build. So I'm not sure if Apple has just moved that section if they just decided not to have any settings in our main general settings here maybe they moved it to the home application although i was not able to find anything in the home application either but matter is officially launching with 16.1 that you just may need to pair something first before the matter section shows up again in settings apple also mentions that the reader controls will now automatically hide when you start reading so you can see there those controls just disappeared and it leads to a much easier to read you know, page here. So you don't have all those distractions on the side and the bottom. And then 16.1 does also fix a few bugs. So you can see Apple mentions that deleted conversations may appear in the conversations list and messages has been fixed. Also dynamic island content is not available when using reachability. That has happened to me on the Pro Max, but that has been fixed. And then also CarPlay may fail to connect when using a VPN app. So all three of those have been addressed here with this update. And then as far as the release notes, there's really not too much going on here with the release notes. We do have quite a few known issues related to home and matter accessories. We also have the known issue for memory allocation. And then we do have two resolved issues related to store kit in the app store. But as far as bugs go, we still have a few bugs that have not been addressed here, even in the RC build. So number one, when we pull down the control center, you will see that we still have that lag for our home kit devices right there. It just looks really bad when you swipe down on that control center. So I'm really surprised to see that not fixed. Hopefully that will be fixed in the next version, but that is still there. Also, a lot of people have still had the screen flickering issue. So if you lower your brightness, you will see in the corner sometimes you will have screen flickering. That has not happened to me, but I have seen reports of people still having that issue. And then also myself and a lot of other users had some issues with severe battery drain and just really bad cell connectivity. So it's yet to be seen if this final version, this RC version fixes that, but I will let you guys know as always in my Apple Weekly episode this weekend and then also next week when 16.1 rolls out to the general public now as far as the performance goes performance feels pretty good so far it doesn't really feel too much better than beta 5 to me i am gonna run a geekbench test here to see if the scores are any different from beta 5 and previous versions but so far it feels pretty smooth i mean it does feel better than 16 and 16.0.3 but it doesn't feel like a big change from beta 5 but let's see what these scores are so we scored an 1876 on the single core and 5355 on the multi-core so if we compare that to beta 5 you could see that the single core is slightly lower but we do have a higher multi-core score there pretty interesting of course that does not ever tell the full story but like i said performance should be pretty similar to what we saw in the previous beta and then as far as the battery life goes obviously it's too early to tell just yet if it's improved over beta 5 but beta 5 actually fixed my battery drain issues so i would expect the rc build here to be pretty solid as well and pretty much be on par with beta 5 but i will let you guys know in my follow-up video this weekend and then let's talk about what to expect next from apple so next up is going to be the final release of iOS 16.1 and my original prediction for this was pretty much spot on so we're expecting that on the 24th or the 25th now we do know for sure that iPad OS 16 and Mac OS Ventura are coming right there on Monday the 24th so those are both confirmed to be released on the 24th we have not seen any confirmation from Apple on iOS 16.1 coming on that day but it does seem pretty likely now I think that iOS 16 16.1 if it does not release on the 24th we will see it the following day on the 25th and then immediately after ios 16.1 releases do not be surprised if we see a 16.2 beta 1 get rolled out to register developers but next week is looking like it's going to be a very exciting week in the world of apple software updates and then finally i wanted to briefly discuss the new apple products that were released earlier today so we got new ipads so a m2 ipad pro which is really not too much different 
from the M1 iPad Pro, so really nothing too crazy there. It is nice if you have not had an iPad Pro before, but if you have an M1, you're probably not gonna want to upgrade. Then we did get the new iPad 10th generation. This is the entry-level iPad that starts at $449, and this now has the redesign with no home button. We have four color options, the A14 Bionic chip, USB-C, improved cameras, and also support for the Magic Keyboard, and also the Smart Keyboard there with the keys on it. So that is really nice for the iPad, and at 449, that is a great value. And then we also got a new Apple TV 4K with the A15 Bionic chip, and the big feature on this one is that it's 50% lighter than the previous generation, and also it does not have a fan inside anymore. So it's gonna make no noise because there is no fan so this is nice it's gonna have like i said the a15 bionic hdr10 plus support up to 128 gigabytes of storage and an updated siri remote with usb-c for charging and it's going to start at 129 dollars. so that is pretty solid so there you have it that is ios 16.1 rc available now for public beta testers and also developers and of course the final public release of 16.1 will be out next week and i will be making a what's new video on that showcasing all of the new features I I just really briefly covered some of the big ones in this video, but there are still quite a few more that I will cover in that video. So stay tuned. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe because we have all those new Apple products and new software coming next week. It's going to be a crazy hectic week, but also a very good one. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.